Welcome to the Manders Mindset Podcast. Here you'll find both monologue and interviews of entrepreneurs, coaches, healers, and a variety of other people, where your host, Amanda Russo, will discuss her own mindset and perspective and her guest mindset and perspective on the world around us. Manders and her guests will help explain to you how shifting your mindset will shift your life. Everyone, welcome to another episode of Mando's Mindset. I'm your host, Amanda Russo, and I'm here today with Sarah L. And Sarah's a nurse and a personal trainer, and I'm here with Sarah today. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thank you for being here. Yeah. So I'm just going to get right into it. Yeah. So my first question for you what has been the most influential moment in your life thus far? The most influential moment? Oh, my goodness. I, <laughs> that's a big question. Um, I would say instead of one moment, I think the biggest thing that has influenced me has been multiple small moments. When I was younger, I moved a lot. Um, my parents weren't in the military or anything. We just relocated a few times throughout my life. And I think that that made the biggest impact on me throughout my life. So maybe not just one moment, but multiple moments of me having to kind of move and change things and settle into a new area several times throughout my life, including my senior year of high school was probably the biggest one. Yeah. Mm. And how did that influence you? Um, I think it kind of forced me to be able to adapt very quickly to different situations. Um, so throughout my life, it was just like, I would get settled somewhere and then up, like, there, whenever there was a change, I would have to adapt to it pretty quickly. And I got very good at that. Um, and I think it helped me in multiple areas of my life between like going to college, obviously, that was another big step. Um, but I had already had to acclimate so many times throughout my life that I feel like it made it a little bit easier and transitioning like into the workforce, like dealing with things through COVID, you know, realizing I wanted to get into personal training and kind of jumping onto that. I think it made me a little bit more um, receptive to change, which I know can be hard for a lot of people. Mm, wow. That's great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I have a question off of yeah. that. Do you have any tips for people to be more accepting of change? Sure. Um, well, I guess let's just start by saying change is inevitable. Um, so we can't really predict it when it's going to happen. We can't really do anything about it most of the time. We just have to kind of accept it and roll with it. So the more that you can let go of the way that you think things should be or the way that you want things to be and just roll with them the way that they are, I think that's the best thing that you can do for yourself because a lot of things in life are outside of our control and we just have to keep going. So uh, It's very true. Yeah. yeah it's true. Great, great <laughs> advice. So I'm curious, I know you haven't been in personal training that, that long. I think it's been two years. Yeah, about two years. Yeah. So how did you make that transition from yep. being a nurse to personal training? Yeah. So I actually still am a nurse right now too. So I'm kind of doing a little bit of both. So it's nice that I'm able to like blend my passions a little bit more. Um, but I had always loved exercising my whole life. Um, I was a dancer when I was younger through high school and everything. Um, went into college and I knew I needed to do something to keep myself moving. Eventually found the gym, just started doing little machines, body pump classes, stuff like that. Um, and with the guidance of some of my friends, ended up getting into weightlifting and I just fell in love with it. Um, I ultimately started weightlifting for my mental health and then it really helped me through, you know, transitioning through college, out of college, into being a nurse during COVID. Then of course the gym shut down. So I'd always wanted to train on the side to help other people kind of find that passion that I found with training. Um, but I didn't quite have the opportunity until about two years ago when I was able to, you know, get off night shift as a nurse, make a little bit more availability in my schedule to do the things that I was passionate about too. So once I was able to kind of find the time to make the time for that for myself, it just grew. And here comes my cat, my little guest star here. She just wants to see what's going on. <laughs> Oh my gosh, she's adorable. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, I started about two years ago. Um, started working with Amber Wrench, who I know you know as well. Yeah. Um, so we started working together and she taught me a whole lot about training. I got certified, started taking on my own clients, and just kind of grew from there. Wow, that's great. Yeah. And so what made you what made you make the final step 
because you had been training for a while. What made you take the initial leap to become certified to finally start doing it? Yeah, so I guess, um, I guess it was just like a good timing in my life. I was at a point where like I was happy where I am in nursing and I had found a job that worked way better with my work-life balance. Um, so things had just kind of started lining up for me. And I knew it was something that was going to take me a little while to do because I was still working full time as a nurse at that point. Um, So I just started doing it slowly but surely, like taking things one step at a time until I was fully certified, started shadowing, et cetera, and doing those types of things just to get some experience under my belt. I was training friends on the side, family on the side, just to kind of get that experience. But I guess um, to answer your question, I I think things just kind of lined up for me and I finally had a chance to have the free time to do that. Um, so I figured no better time than the present. <laughs> That's very true. That's yeah. very true. Okay. Now I'm I'm curious. They do have their simila- similarities, um, personal okay. training and nursing. But how was it making that identity shift from being only a nurse to also being a trainer? Yeah. So I definitely felt like, you know, I wanted to get into training to share my passion, of course, but also to kind of work on a more preventative side of medicine. So with nursing, and I worked in the ICU for three years, um, and now I'm in like a cardiac procedural area. So I'm dealing with people with things like coronary artery disease, things that kind of have slowly come on throughout their life, whether it's because of their poor lifestyle choices, family history, things like that. So I wanted to find a way to kind of help people get away from that area so that I wouldn't see them in the hospital later than life. Um, to kind of get ahead of it for people. Um, So that's really where those passions blended for me. And I feel like now knowing what I know as a trainer, I'm able to provide better care for my patients and vice versa. Knowing what I know as a nurse, I'm able to provide better care for my clients as well in the gym. Wow, I love that. Yeah, so it's kind of going hand in hand. They're, They're definitely similar, but again, different in the way that like, I know that I'm doing something to help prevent them to have that you know what I mean, to disease prevention later on, as opposed to, oh, well, we're already here. What, you know what I mean? What can we do? But at the same time, a lot of my patients in the hospital benefit from diet and exercise. So it's something that I can share with them as well. Mm, I love that. And I love that your approach to training is preventative disease. Yeah. Like not everybody, I feel like in the fitness realm, approach it from mindsets like that. Yeah, it's definitely very aesthetics driven, especially like on social media. And don't get me wrong, like everybody wants to look good. Of course we do. <laughs> no, absolutely. But I, I love your reasoning behind it. It's just yeah. wholesome. You don't, you don't hear it often about that preventative, you know? So I yeah. love that. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. So uh, I'm curious, how do you like training other people compared to training yourself? So it's very different. Um, I actually like training other people way more than training myself. Um, I've worked with several trainers. And I I always say, like, even trainers need trainers. Like, we need people to work with and bounce ideas off of. And nobody knows everything. So we all have our specialties and things that we, you know, specialize in. But training other people is so much fun. Because when you're in the gym and you're by yourself and you're, like, doing a workout, you'll push yourself. But there's always, like, oh, you know what? I could go up and wait, but no, nobody's watching. Like, I'm just going to use, you know what I mean? I'm going to use what I have. Like, it's fine. When I'm training somebody, I'm saying, here's the extra heavy dumbbells. I know you can do it. And do you know how many times a client has said to me, oh, I I can't do that. I can't do that. And I'm like, I I promise you, you can. I wouldn't be giving it to you if you couldn't do it. So kind of just having that ability to push people outside of their comfort zones and make them realize that they are capable of so much more than they think. Um, I've obviously translated a lot of that to myself over the years and kind of given myself that push as well and trying to be more, um, honorable to myself as well as I am to my clients. So kind of taking my own advice sometimes. So, but yeah, it's definitely really fun to be able to push people and see what they can do. And they're usually shocked with how much they can do. I I bet. I bet. That's awesome though. That's awesome. Do you still enjoy training yourself just as much now that you're training others? Yeah. And a lot of the times I'm like my own guinea pig for things too. Like, oh, let me try out this new exercise. I I never make my clients do things that like I wouldn't do myself. So kind Mm -hmm. of being able to be creative in that way is really fun as well. No, definitely. That's awesome. Yeah. 
So I'm curious, what type of clients do you typically work with? So um, I only train women. So I have trained men in the past and I pivoted to just training women just because um, I've had great male clients, but a lot of the times the weight that they're lifting, I'm a very small girl. I am, I'm five foot one, like 120 pounds. I, I'm not a big person. So to spot somebody on a heavier lift as a man, I felt a little like, all right, how hard can I actually push you? Because I don't feel safe. And at the same time, um, male body composition is completely different and I'm not used to training men and I'm used to training somebody like myself and, you know, other females. So it's a whole different realm when working with men and they're great, but I just, my passion is working with females. Um, also just the whole like hormonal system with females and, you know, getting into women who have chronically dieted for a long time. Like that has just kind of been my passion to help their metabolism and to help them grow and feel strong again and comfortable in their own skin. So I just love working with women. Um, but I have age ranges. I think my youngest client is 18 and I work with women well into their fifties. Um, so a big range. Yeah. But there's so much to learn from all of those clients. That's for sure. Wow. That's awesome. I love yeah. that. And you're at pro fitness. Still, yeah. Correct. Right now I'm at pro fitness. Yep. And I'm also starting to take clients online as well which has been great because I've been able to reach more people. Um, some people with busy schedules who, you know, can't make it to the gym or don't live in this area of Rhode Island. It's been really fun to be able to create workouts for them and follow along and still help them reach their goals without physically being one-on-one. -on -one. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. How do you like that compared to training in person? Um, it's very different. Um, I do love it, like I said, because I'm able to reach more people. I feel like my online training program is much more education focused. I'm able to really like dive into macros, like why I'm telling you you should eat what I'm telling you. Why are we doing these exercises? Um, getting into more of like that education on hormones and reverse dieting. And I'm able to do a lot more education online because I have the platform for it. Whereas mm -hmm. in person, I see somebody for an hour I give them a great workout and then, you know, little tidbits along the way of, you know, what we should be doing. But I feel like online training has allowed me to get much more in depth as far as like the full scope of health, which is really cool. Um, mm -hmm. But then on the negative side of that, I'm not seeing them doing their workouts. So it's a lot of like just trusting that they are following my direction as far as form goes and sending videos back and forth to just make sure that everything's proper because I wouldn't want anybody hurting themselves. Nice. Whereas in person, I can physically see, okay, like move your leg two inches to the left, you know, things like that. Mm, I gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Well, makes sense. Different, but they both have their benefits. That's for sure. No, that makes a lot of sense. Is there one you prefer to? Um, it's kind of hard to say. No, I really like them both. Um, online client, uh, my online clients definitely give me a lot of flexibility because, you know, I can talk to them from anywhere. I can kind of create the programs from anywhere. Um, and they have a lot more flexibility as far as when they get their workouts done. They don't have to wait for a time slot that I'm available. They can do it in the middle of the night if they wanted to. And I'm still following along and watching their weight progress and cheering them on. So it is really cool. That's true. That's yeah. convenient as well for different people. Definitely. Yeah, I think it just gives a lot more opportunity for people. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So... You made a pretty big shift. Yeah, they do have similarities. But mm -hmm. I'm curious if you, what advice you have or tips you might have for someone looking to pursue a big passion of theirs. Yeah. You did make a pretty big identity shift, adding, creating your own business, getting the yeah. certification. That was a lot of big steps. So okay. any tips for anybody? Um, yeah, I would just say like, don't be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone because that's where people really grow. I feel like if you're always staying where you're comfortable and with what's easy, even though it might not be the best thing for you, it's easy to do. It's easy for people. Um, I'm fortunate. I really love both of my jobs, but I know a lot of people who right out of college got into a job that they just hated and they were absolutely miserable in that job and they might want to pursue something else, but they might be a little scared to jump out of that comfort zone. So I would say my biggest piece of advice is don't be afraid to be scared because it's scary to jump out of your comfort zone and it's scary to do something new and to not know if you're going to be successful and you're not always going to be successful. So just to kind of trust yourself and trust that everything happens for a reason. Um, 
So jumping out of that comfort zone, even though it's scary, it's necessary to grow. Wow, that, that's very true. Thank yeah. you for that. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm, I'm also curious what you would, what you would advise someone who wants to take the first step in their fitness journey and starting off at the gym, what you would suggest they begin with? Yeah. So, um, as far as what to begin with wanting to get into a gym, I know a lot of people are very nervous to step foot in a gym. There's all of this like gym anxiety, which I'm sure you've heard before, maybe even felt before. I know I have. Um, so I would say taking the first step is just getting there. Just, just get there. <laughs> even if all you do is walk on the treadmill and scope out the gym for the first couple of days, just take a nice little light walk, get there, get familiar, smile at somebody, just get comfortable. Um, and then eventually to venture into the weight section, I would say, first of all, before you pick up weights, please work with a trainer, um, work with somebody who not only will be able to show you things and make sure that your form is correct, but also working with a trainer is like having a workout buddy. Like you have somebody right there with you to kind of show you what you should be doing. So you don't really have to think about it. Um, so obviously, and I'm not just saying that because I am a trainer. That's how I started. Like you want to work with somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, but if you are at the point where, you know, you want to get started in the gym, not really sure if a trainer is right for you, I always recommend at least start with the machines. Um, gyms usually have a little set of circuit machines, and they're usually pretty self-explanatory as far as, you know, how to position yourself, how to adjust the seat, look at the diagrams on there, don't go crazy heavy, just go with some very light weight, realizing like which muscles are moving and why, um, and go from there. I would always say start start simple, super simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. And then when you are ready to move into more of a training program and more intentional training, definitely work with a trainer. But the first step, just get there. Just take the leap and just get there. I honestly completely agree. Yeah. With, with everything, honestly, it's it's all about the first step, forming the habit and creating that new identity for yourself. Yeah, definitely. Like... I want to say it's Atomic Habits. I read about yeah, in the book. I just read that book. Yeah. Like, it's so good. And he talks about even just putting on your shoes for the gym. Mm -hmm. Like getting your clothes out the night before, putting your water bottle next to your clothes, things like that. Yeah. Small little things to reinforce yourself to do it. Exactly. What helped you the most when you first started going to the gym? a good question um i fell in love with You've the been community. Working out for a while now i honestly i fell in love with really. thank you thank yeah. you i honestly fell in love with the community at first the environment and like yes there is that gym intimidation mm -hmm. but once i in my eyes once you get over the initial of that people are so friendly People are I so have, nice. I always say the gym people are like the nicest people in the world. They're so accepting. Like so, so much so. I even recently traveled to Florida and I was at a gym, had never been to ever. Mm -hmm. And I left my like little barbell clips in there. One of the guys inside ran out to my car to bring me the clips because Aww. he was like, I know we don't have these here and these are nice. I was like, <laughs> That's so nice. nice. Like, I have had more sincere interactions at gyms than I have at most places. Yeah, I agree. So, and even that community environment, I loved it when I first started. It, I made a lot of friends and I became friends with a trainer at the time and he was showing me how to do different moves. I didn't hire him and work one-on-one -on -one right away, but just the basics of how to do certain things and even to prevent injury, to prevent yourself from hurting yourself, having pain, doing it the wrong way, that's going to make you not want to do it either. Right, right. You know? Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. It's forming the habit with everything is, it's, it's a small thing. A lot of people want to start and do everything at once. But that's how you set yourself up for failure. Exactly. Taking small steps. And that's something that I see a lot of my clients coming to me with. They'll be like, oh, I've, I've been wanting to lose this 10 pounds. I've tried everything. 
And really what it ends up is they have this mindset where they are either on or they're off. And finding that balance to the point where you can enjoy working out and like enjoy eating what you need to be eating to fuel your body is huge because people think, oh my God, like if I want to lose this 10 pounds, I can't ever eat cake. I can't ever have a drink and kind of teaching them like, no, it's restricting yourself from those things. That's what's preventing you from losing the weight, believe it or not. So finding that like healthy balance is something that takes a long time to realize sometimes too. So that's something that, yeah, a lot of my clients have definitely struggled with. So changing that whole, I know your whole podcast is about mindset, Um, (laughs) changing that mindset aspect of, you know, just this on and off dieting on and off working out to like this, oh, let's make this like a sustainable thing that you can keep going is huge. No, absolutely. And I completely agree. Balance is so, so important because it's it's the only way to be sustainable in Mm -hmm. anything. Yeah, because we're not robots. <laughs> exactly. we can't operate, like, we're not eating, you know, if you're eating your chicken and rice and broccoli every single day, four times a day, good for you. You're probably in incredible shape. But finding that way to um, still enjoy life and enjoy all the things that you love is really important to making it last. I completely agree. Yeah. I completely agree. So I'm, I'm curious, we talked about initially getting into the gym what tips do you have for initially changing nutrition? Changing nutrition. Okay, so I would say start slow. So like you just mentioned about, you know, atomic habits doing one step at a time. I have never taken a client and said, oh my God, we're going to turn this upside down. You're going to, you know, I had a client one time who would eat fast food three to four times a day and that was it. So as much as I would have loved to say, you're going to cook every meal at home, you're going to, you know what I mean? Like meal prep for everything. You're going to eat these macros. That's just not the approach that we took. It's not the approach that would have led her to sustainable results. It was what thing can we, I always like to focus on adding the good. So instead of saying, oh, we're going to take this away, we're going to take this away. We're going to just focus on protein first. Um, I don't care if you're still eating your three meals out, four meals out at fast food restaurants. We're going to focus on can we shift away from this maybe higher fat containing thing to this um, higher protein containing thing. So making simple switches without doing a complete overhaul of somebody's diet is huge. Um, And if you are somebody who a lot of my clients, for example, um, have been under eating for a very long time and some of them knew it and some of them didn't realize how drastically they were under eating. So I'm not going to say, okay, we're going to go from eating 900 calories a day to eating 2,000. That's just it's just not going to happen that way. So we start with, hey, let's just add breakfast, even if it's two eggs. Let's just add some protein in your breakfast. And then we work with that for a few weeks. And then, okay, what else can we add that's going to be, um, that's going to contribute to you reaching your goals? So I would say definitely starting slowly and not thinking of it as an overhaul, but what can I add that's going to benefit my body the most? I love that you said that because that is one of, and I can't remember for the life of me where I heard it when I first started my fitness journey and I'm so mad, but I heard somebody on a podcast say that our minds, it is easier to add in more of the good than it is to take away because you feel like you're depriving yourself of stuff and it makes you want it more. Even like when you were a kid and your parents said, you can't have whatever it is. You yeah. wanted that thing even more. That's all you can think about. <laughs> exactly. So if you go into this and say, I'm not eating brownies ever again, all you're going to want is a brownie. Exactly. So even when I first started my weight loss journey, I even had a trainer say to me, oh, you got to stop eating this. I said, I'm not going to stop eating that. No. He's like, me too. I'm like, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm not stopping that thing. He's like, yeah. you should No, I'm not adding in all of this. I can't wake up one day and not track any food, never go to the gym, and then think I'm going to wake up the next day, go to the gym for two hours, meal prep, and track all my food. It's not... It's not a switch. No. And that's taking a long time to realize, too. I mean, um, yeah, working with different clients, working with myself, friends, it's like you kind of realize over time that, yeah, it's, it's not a switch. It's a, it's a very, it's a balance. It really is in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Yeah. If, if anybody can make that, oh my gosh, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and just start a new habit. Good for you. But <laughs> it's very difficult to do. And it's 
And it's difficult to sustain it long term. I think a lot of people might be able to do it once or twice. Yeah, I wake up and I do this thing. But you're not going to do it long term. Forever, right. And then you're going to then you're going to end up just dis- disappointed. Mm-hmm. And then it leads you, it kind of sets you up for, I don't want to say failure, but to be disappointed in yourself. And that's honestly like the worst thing that you can do for your self-esteem. And the whole goal of what I'm trying to do here is to build up self-esteem, especially in women. Cause you know how hard it is, especially with social media these days and all of the things that we see and feel like everything should be so instant. I know I've spoken with people about this before. Like we live in a world of instant gratification So when you tell somebody also that like, hey, like for you to reach this goal, you will do it and you will sustain it, but it might take some time. That's another kind of hard pill for people to swallow. Yeah, I know you see these so many like 20 day, 21 day fix and like all these. I'm like, buddy, buy buy my tea and you'll lose 10 pounds in a week. Yeah, (laughs) I like this three week workout program and you you have it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. and I, think, I think certain programs like that can be helpful for um, initiating change in some people. Like, um, I know you and I way back when did a program with our friend Amber. Yeah, oh, and it, yeah. Um, we learned so much and we started developing those really good habits um, and it helps kickstart you into something. But you have to have the willpower and the guidance to continue it even further from there. So that's where no, some I- of them fall off because it's easy for anybody to be really disciplined for you know six weeks or 10 days like that's fine but to continue and to carry on with that discipline is what takes the hard work I completely agree yeah. and the way a lot of it is marketed it's I think though a lot of these programs and these workshops they're great to yeah. initially go and even show you the ways but the ones that advertise like this 21 day fix yeah What's, what are you fixing? Like, <laughs> Seriously. I, I've, I've seen them. 21 days. It was always so much. Cleanse. Or I've, I've had so many people, clients and friends. Okay, what can I do to cleanse? I just went on vacation and I went overboard. What can I do to cleanse my body? And I'm like, oh my goodness. Your body has its own self-cleansing <laughs> system. You just have to honor it. <laughs> uh, yes, I know. All these detox cleanse and you yeah. need to like, clean the system. And I'm like. And it sounds so silly because you'd see that and at anybody who like wouldn't know any better, you know, you're like, oh, sounds great to me. But in reality, like our bodies have everything that they need. We just need to give them the nutrients that we need. So I always tell people, you know, if you fall off track, which happens inevitably, like people will have days and weeks where, you know, they're not really on track for their goals and that's okay. You just start back over not from square one. You're not going 20 steps forward and 20 steps back. You probably went 20 steps forward and a half a step back. So you're just going to continue towards that 21st step. That's kind of how I like to describe it to people. I love that. Yeah. Love that. Visual. No, that's very, that's very true. Yeah. And I, I just love how you mentioned about adding in stuff. Cause that, that was my biggest approach. I added in going to the gym. Yeah. I, added in water I added in food I didn't change or eliminate anything for about yeah. three minutes and not a single thing and everybody's like you can't just be drinking like this you can't just be I'm not gonna set myself up to be disappointed to be let right. down because I could go happen. balls to the wall and then yeah. it's gonna last me maybe two weeks then in two weeks, it's all going to come back and I'm going to be... Exactly. Or I could do it slowly and then we're still slowly getting better and better as years go on. Exactly. And that's all you can do. Small steps and you have to make goals that are attainable for you. Um, And what one person's goals look like might be completely different from how two people could have the exact same goal, but how person A and person B both get to that goal are going to look completely different just based on lifestyles and, you know, different things like that. That so it's definitely true. not one size fits all as you've already experienced. You know, that's very true. I actually heard a quote once that really resonated with me, but there's multiple, multiple routes to the same destination. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So you, you can achieve the same thing as somebody else by doing it a different way. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it definitely. Getting somewhere. 
Mm -hmm. I'm curious. I'm going to want to switch a little bit. What has been the best decision you've made thus far in your life? Oh, my gosh. That's a big question, too. <laughs> All these, like, loaded questions. Um, oh, my gosh. There's so many. Um, first one that comes to mind. First thing that comes to mind. This is going to sound so cheesy. That's okay. My boyfriend. My boyfriend. Oh. Just, like, doing life with him and, like, sounds so silly, but... Yeah, meeting him, I guess, is the best decision of my life. We're not married yet, so I can't say marrying him, but. <laughs> That's sweet. But, um, yeah, adopting my cats, that was a great decision. No, um, but I, I feel like I've made a lot of, like, smaller decisions that have kind of led me to be where I am today. Nothing huge and big and pivotal, but um, definitely smaller conscious decisions just to, like, better myself. Um, another huge one that I feel like could benefit a lot of people um, is I – a couple of years ago, I was kind of going through some things and I went out and saw a therapist. And I feel like there's not so much a stigma around that today, but going to therapy was huge for me because even though it's not something that I, you know, continue to do forever, it really helped me in that situation and kind of taught me tools of how to um, kind of deal with my own mind, which I feel like our own minds can kind of get in the way sometimes. Um, so that was huge for me as well. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Okay. But I can't think of like, you know, one huge thing, but how about you? What would yours be? Ooh. Um, <laughs> you're asking him back to me and I'm I not know, I'm sending it back. <sighs> My best decision. Yeah. That's a hard, it's a tough question, right? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um... The first thing that came to mind for me was moving to Rhode Island. For oh, college. yeah. Where did you move from? Western Mass. I was in South Hadley my whole life. Oh, I lived and in Longmeadow for a year. How did yeah. I ever know that? I was, um, my senior year, I was in Longmeadow. Oh, my. What year was that? Um, 2015. 14, 15. Wow! So I would I would have been in South Hadley in that year because I graduated oh, yeah. in 2015. That's so funny. Wow! wow. I know. that was my little one year pit stop. Oh my god! For your senior year, why yeah. not? Um, it was just my dad's job was um in Massachusetts at that time, and that was they just like did research on the best high schools, and they were like, oh, we'll park here for a year before because <laughs> I was going to college the next year anyway, and ended up going to URI. Oh so it was a, a really good opportunity. I got to go to a really good school. So thanks to my Ooh. parents. For that one. Um, where did you end up going to college? Roger Williams. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And you have a law degree, right? Yes. M not my, not my, like a bachelor's. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Did mm -hmm. you ever, do you ever think about going to law school? I thought about it. I yeah. I'm, I've got it. I'm on the fence about it. Yeah too sure yeah for a while that was like my gun ho plan and then we, I kind of pivoted and I just I've worked very closely with a lot of attorneys and yeah. most of them don't enjoy their job yes I have my best friend is an attorney I'm just gonna move locations really quick because thank you fine upstairs um, yeah, no, my best friend is an attorney and, um, she has definitely struggled on and off with, you know, finding work that she really enjoys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there was just so many different attorneys that have hated their job and told me so vividly how much they hate what they do every day. Yeah. And I just, life's short. It's long, but it's also short. And... I would regularly, day to day, see so many different attorneys hating and dreading being there in yeah. the office. And I'm like, I don't know that I want to spend three years, a lot more money in school. Yeah. To do something that you're not passionate about. I, I enjoy being a paralegal. But yeah. I've also learned through that. I don't want to do it forever. Exactly. And you have to find things that you're passionate about, for sure. 
it's it's just an environment that no one is ever happy. Yeah. And I had an attorney say that to me once. You are never seeing an attorney for a positive thing. Yeah, this is true. So, this is true. <laughs> I never <laughs> thought about like, that one. Yeah. Like, maybe you're getting divorced. Maybe you have custody issues. Maybe you're suing somebody. Maybe you're yeah, being... True. It's not like this is really positive. Exactly. And, I even had one attorney who, who did prenuptial agreements, like, before you get married. Yeah. But they're only so positive because, like, oh, they got a lot of money, and if it doesn't work out, they don't want her to take it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. And I'm just like, nobody's coming in here happy. Mm. I don't, don't want to do this. It's kind of like when I was working in the ICU. I mean, I was I was leaving every day so sad because of the things that I was seeing. Um, and I'm always like, well, maybe this is where I'm supposed to be because not everybody could handle this type of work. Um, but kind of taking a step back and being like, there are many other areas of nursing that I could get into with much more positive outcomes than the ICU. So that was huge. Yeah. A big shift. And it's important to recognize those things too. That was, that was me with being a paralegal because mm -hmm. I can help the people basically the same way just by not going to court and representing them, yeah. but having a little more balance in my own life. Exactly. That's really important. You know? Yeah. So, probably not going to go to law school, but... That's okay. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> Definitely not for me. <laughs> <laughs> but is there anything else you want to tell the listeners any feedback you want to give them? No pressure, obviously, but... Oh, gosh, I think. Um, well, I'm just going to say, if you are somebody who's, like, thinking about taking the next step um, to do something good for your health, I promise you, you won't regret it. Um, it's something that's literally going to last you a lifetime, and it's going to not only benefit you, but all of the people around you, because when you are happier and healthier, you're just a better person in general. Um, so, yeah, to anybody who's, like, thinking about taking the first step or not sure where they want to be, in their fitness journey, just take that first step, you know, just, just go to the gym, put the shoes on, grab the water bottle, do the first step. Definitely. Love that. Good. Yeah. Thank you. So Absolutely. I do have one more question for you. Yeah, absolutely. So I wanted to approach the podcast in a way where it wasn't only questions from me. So mm -hmm. I asked my best friend to come up with a question that I could ask guests not knowing she had no idea who I'd be asking this to, where the people were coming from, or anything about them. So it's yeah. a completely unbiased question. Yeah. But her question for you is, where do you hope to see yourself three years from now? Three years from now. So three years from now, um, career-wise, family-wise, just in general? In general. In general. So I would love to see myself hopefully having a bigger online platform to be able to reach more women and help more people. Um, I would love to see myself, you know, having more experience in my nursing field and being more comfortable um, with that job. Family wise, I would love to see my family members, my nieces and nephews grow up and be happy and healthy. Um, and I would love to, you know, have a wedding someday and hopefully have some kids of my own. Nice. Yeah. Keep growing one step at a time. That's all. That's all I can ask of myself. <laughs> I get it. I yeah. get it. Well, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on. Awesome. Thank you for having me. It was so nice talking to you. Of course. It was nice talking to you as well. And I will leave all of Sarah's info in the show notes so you guys can connect with her virtually or you can find her at Pro Fitness in Warwick if you want to train with her as well and thank you so much thank you and thank you all for listening to another episode of Amanda's Mindset as always if you enjoyed the show if you like it subscribe and share it with someone you think would benefit from this thanks guys until next time <laughs>